Hello friends, welcome to lecture 4.2 on uh, bandwidth equation primarily and we will also introduce the concept of instantaneous frequency. So, this is a continuation of what we have discussed in lecture 4.1. The objective again is to learn the specific concepts in time frequency analysis which is the bandwidth equation for TFA that is in the context of time frequency analysis and then uh, obtain an introduction to the concept of instantaneous frequency. We will continue the discussion on instantaneous frequency in the next lecture. So, let us begin uh, with these signal representations, complex representations. We concluded the last lecture with an example on why and how complex representations can help us in rightly determining the center frequency of even a simple uh, sine wave. So, therefore, we will assume uh, henceforth that I would like to work with complex representations. So, this is a complex representation for x of t and here I have the complex representation for x of omega. What are this phi of t and phi of omega is not really uh, so much of a concern at this moment. Our objective is to derive the expression for the bandwidth. So, with these representations and the definition of bandwidth and also the simple trick that we went over in the definition of bandwidth, you should go and uh, refer to that slide. We can rewrite this integral here in terms of the signal in time itself, where this d over dt is now as an operator operating on x of t. Now, we could rewrite this product of x star of t and the square of 1 over j d over dt minus average of omega times x of t simply as the uh, modular square that is a fairly simple algebra to go from this integral to this integral. You should recognize that the essentially the integrand here is the modular square of this quantity 1 over j d over dt minus average of omega times x of t. Now, what I do here is I bring in the expression for x of t which is a of t times e to the j phi of t and the derivative of x of t would have two terms applying the chain rule. The first one would be a dot of t e to the j phi of t and the second term would be a of t times phi dot of t times e to the j phi of t. So, what I have done here is I have essentially taken a of t out of this uh, the uh, factor within the mo modulus and just rewritten it. So, that is the only difference here otherwise the algebra is fairly straightforward. Now, this is a complex number phi dot of t is a real number average of omega is a real number. So, phi dot of t minus average of omega is a real part and 1 over j a dot of t or a of t is the imaginary part. So, you are looking at magnitude square of a complex number right and so this essentially if I take the square magnitude I will have two terms one being magnitude of a dot of t over a of t square times a square of t here. Uh, so, I have here a dot of t over a of t square times a square of t dt. Of course, I could cancel out, but there is just uh, for uh, simplicity sake or for a point that we want to illustrate, we have retained it this way. And the second expression would be phi dot of t minus uh, mu omega or average of omega square times a square of t dt. This is a fundamental equation known as a bandwidth equation and what remains is the interpretation of these two terms. Because this first term goes to 0 whenever a of t is constant that is whenever a dot of t is 0. That means, whenever there is no amplitude modulation this a dot is nothing but the deriv derivative of a of t. Whenever there is no amplitude modulation this term would vanish and whenever a of t is not 0 this term will uh, exist and therefore, this term solely uh, accounts for the amplitude modulation contributions to the bandwidth. And here I have phi dot of t minus average of omega square a square of t dt. Now, look at this way a square of t dt is nothing but my energy density in time all right and average of omega is the mean uh, frequency here and I also have here phi dot of t. At this moment although I say frequency modulation it is not immediately clear why this should be frequency modulation unless phi dot of t 
really only has some units of frequency or can be given some interpretation of the frequency. So, how do we interpret this change of phase with respect to time? Remember phi of t is called the phase as we had even defined earlier uh, in the basic definitions module. It has units of frequency obviously, because you are subtracting the average frequency. So, to understand phi dot of t, we go back to the definition of mean frequency. Again invoke the definition, rewrite the same definition in terms of x of t rather x star of t and x of t both. And what we do here is we substitute again for x of t the signal representation that I have here and obtain this expression. Now, if I look at this expression, the left hand side is a real number, average of omega is a real number, whereas on the right hand side I have two terms. The first term is a purely real number, which is integral phi dot of t times a square of t dt and the second term is a real uh, imaginary number. I, I have a real number on the left hand side and I have a right uh, complex number on the right hand side. So, if things have to agree, I know this definition is, I have started from the definition, so everything is consistent. Therefore, the imaginary portion has to go to 0, that is an intuitive way of zeroing out the second term. If you are not convinced, then you can evaluate the integral uh, for the second term and you will quickly see that it is a perfect integrand and therefore, it goes to uh, perfect uh, integrand and therefore, it goes to 0. So, what we are left with is this beautiful result which says that the mean frequency although defined this way turns out to be phi dot of t integral of phi dot of t a square of t dt. Remember a square of t dt is the energy density in time and on the left hand side I have an average quantity. Therefore, phi dot of t has to have some interpretation of a instantaneous frequency and that is very important. So, what we are saying is on the left hand side I have average. How do I obtain averages? The way I obtain averages is I take the instantaneous value and roughly weigh it with the energy density times dt and take the integral. That is how we have even derived the mean time. Now, that is the same story here. I have uh, average of omega being phi dot of t times a square of t dt and therefore, phi dot of t has to have some interpretation of an instantaneous or a local frequency and that is where the concept of well mathematical definition of instantaneous frequency is born. The concept of instantaneous frequency is that uh, does not require all this mathematical formalization. It is a fairly easy thing to imagine. It is a physical concept. It is essentially the frequency of the signal at a given point in time. But this paves way for the mathematical definition of instantaneous frequency. It is essentially the derivative of the phase, which phase when I this phase that appears in the complex representation of the signal. right? Now, now I define this instantaneous frequency as the derivative of the phase. Again, this phase is not the regular phase that we talk of in sin of omega t plus phi and so on. This phase is the phase that appears in the complex representation of the signal. In particular, we will say that the analytical representation of a signal. Now, of course, what remains to be seen is whether this mathematical definition tallies and in reality gives me the correct value of the instantaneous frequency of a signal and so on. That is something that we will discuss later on. But clearly, because phi dot of t is in general a function of time, this omega is also a function of time sub denoted by the subscript i. And now, we return to the bandwidth equation. In place of phi dot of t, I substitute omega i of t. So, this term now is nice, uh, is ready for interpretation. I, uh, I can straight away interpret this as the contribution of the frequency modulation because whenever there is a frequency modulation, frequency is going to change with time in which case omega i is not going to be equal to the average frequency. But when I have a sine wave of a fixed frequency, then the instantaneous frequency is going to be fixed in time exactly equal to the average frequency itself. Therefore, this term will go to 0. In other words, when there is no frequency modulation, there is uh, this term will vanish and whenever there is a frequency modulation, this in general will exist and therefore, I can say this term contributes. Uh, the represents the frequency modulation contributions to the bandwidth. So, now I have this beautiful equation here in equation 8. The bandwidth is a sum of two terms, 
one due to amplitude modulation, other due to frequency modulation. This is a normalized version of this expression. This goes on to show that the bandwidth by itself cannot tell me whether the signal was being amplitude modulated or frequency modulated. In fact, I can think of this signal that is given to me as another signal with a different amplitude modulation and frequency modulation, so that the overall bandwidth is the same for both. That is exactly the example that we had discussed in the previous lecture and we return to that. I have here this same signal expression that I have given earlier. Now, look at this. So, this part here represents the amplitude modulation alpha by pi raised to 1 over 4 times e to the minus alpha t square by 2 and e to the j beta t square by 2 represents the frequency uh, uh, contributions and frequency modulation. If you plug in this expression into the expression for the bandwidth, you can derive sigma square omega as alpha square plus beta square by 2 alpha. Alf when alpha is 0, <coughs> uh, you can say that essentially the signal is 0 of course, but when alpha goes to very small value, uh, then the amplitude modulation comes down and when beta is 0, essentially there is no frequency modulation at all, it is a pure amplitude decaying uh, signal. And these four signals here use different values of alpha and beta to show you how the signal time profiles are affected by different choices of alpha and beta. I have here very high value of alpha and very high value of uh, beta and then again I come here to the extreme case where very low values of alpha and beta being relatively greater than alpha. And <clears throat> what I want to show you here is that I have different values of alpha and beta all giving you the same bandwidth, but completely different time profiles because as I change alpha and beta, I am changing the extent of amplitude and frequency modulations, but preserving the bandwidth. So, looking at the bandwidth alone, I will not be able to determine which of these signals uh, is the actual time profile. So, looking at the spectral density alone will not tell me, uh, give me an idea of what is happening in time. So, that is the main uh, point that I want to illustrate. So, we will conclude this lecture with this concept of group delay that we may or may not really pursue extensively in this uh, course. This group delay is an analog of the instantaneous frequency. It is a instantaneous frequency is a frequency that is a function of time and it tells me at this instant what is the uh, frequency. The group delay will tell me the average time spent by a particular frequency component. Uh, the definition of group delay is uh, given here. Okay. It is essentially, remember our instantaneous frequency was based on phi of t here, the phase in the complex representation of x of t. So, naturally you should expect the group delay to be the uh, dependent on the phase, but of the complex representation of its Fourier transform and that is exactly what has occurred here. So, I have group delay as a negative derivative of psi prime of omega. Again, in order to derive the instantaneous frequency, we started with the definition of mean frequency. In order to derive the group delay, we start with the definition of average time and then we realize that the average time can be represented as psi prime of omega times mod x of omega square d omega. Once again, the same interpretations and arguments can be given here. Psi prime of omega should represent some local function of time, a function of omega which has units of time, so that it is averaged by this spectral density to give me average time. And therefore, uh, because of the negative sign here, the group delay is the negative derivative of psi of omega. As I said, group delay has the interpretation that it is the average time spent by this frequency component of frequency omega in the signal. So, that is a nice piece of information as well. I would like to know Basically, maybe there is some frequencies which have spent longer time in the signal, some frequencies which have spent shorter times that will help me in feature extraction and uh, analysis of the signal. So, this is a couple of uh, references again for your reading. In the next lecture, we are going to talk about instantaneous frequencies and analytic signals. Thank you. <laughs>